As you know by now, the theme of this year's San Diego County Fair is the Fab Fair, paying tribute to the Beatles. So this morning we have author, musician, and San Diego music historian yes. Bart Mendoza joining us with us because you're you're really a Beatles expert. I'm a Beatles fanatic, actually. I think that's pretty much <laughs> the safe way to put it. But yeah, yeah. So um, I put together a new book that uh, details all the Beatles' random connections to San Diego. And they have a few of them. There's actually quite a few connections there. I mean, they only played one concert here in 1965, obviously August 28th. But uh, from musicians uh, like Nathan East, who played uh, bass with George Harrison, to a Beatles compatriot Tony Sheridan, there's a lot of uh, connections here in San Diego to the to So Fab tell me about the book that you put together. How do you piece all this together? Just sort of well, talking to folks who were there? Yeah, that's actually part of it. But when I was a little kid, I was like, wow, wouldn't it have been fun to be in the Beatles? And you pretend. Right. And I, that related to uh, uh, what if the Beatles had connections to San Diego. And then I started interviewing musicians in my job as a, as a writer, journalist. And I realized everybody had a Beatles story. Everybody has one. You know, I started because of this. I saw them on the Ed Sullivan show. I bought their first record. Right. And the story started to come out, and I started connecting the dots, and there was a lot of connections to San Diego. And one of them, I love this, Paul McCartney rented a vacation home in La Jolla. Good choice. Yeah, that's actually, well, it was and it wasn't, because what turned out was that he asked someone to rent him a vacation home in La Jolla, but it turned out he really wanted to be in San Francisco. Oops. Oops. So uh, he, you know, the wrong house. Wrong side here, of California. Yeah, wrong side of California. The house ended up being empty most of the summer here. But, <laughs> but there you go. You know, it's just, he tried. He's only been here once uh, in concert in 1976. So we're hoping he'll come back on this new tour. Okay. Now Ringo Humphreys. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one too because. Um, Clearly, the man loves Humphreys. This, he's going to be there again on July 11th, and I believe it's the 12th time in San Diego, the ninth time in a row at Humphreys. So he just loves Talk the place. Talk about the crowd that shows up. Is, well, is it really a, an the, interesting crowd? It, it whole, runs the whole gamut? It runs the whole gamut, but one of the things that I always found amusing is a couple of years ago I saw Ringo at Humphreys, and he was commenting on all the people that hang out outside on, in the boats on the, little, uh, on the uh, little pier there watching for free. So he was joking about the boat people coming across and so on and so forth. So that was kind of fun. So your whole inspiration from the very beginning, you were a little kid when you fell in love with the Beatles? Yeah, my aunt had a Revolver album and uh, I saw the cover and just fell in love with it and wanted to know all about that. But then when I was 10 years old, I was lucky enough to see A Hard Day's Night. And as soon as I saw that last concert scene, that's pretty much all I ever wanted to do from that moment on. That, that made me want to be a musician, that made me want to know about music. Have you gotten to meet any of the Beatles? I have uh, been in the room. I, I was lucky enough to work <laughs> for Capitol Records uh, for 11 years, and so I've been in the room with them and so on. But as you know, when you're in those kinds of jobs, you're not really allowed to bother the uh, the talent. You can't be a fan. You can't be a fan, you right? Have to just so take a step back. It but would be odd if you cool. threw your arms around them right then and yeah, there. <laughs> I got to see Paul McCartney about a dozen times over the years. That's pretty good. And you're going to be speaking actually this afternoon, talking about all of your Beatles knowledge at the right, fair. Right, right. We're going to be. It's going to be all kinds of trivia about the Beatles connection to San Diego. We're going to show some videos. We're going to. Uh, uh, have a, a special guest, and uh, just to uh, really tag it, at the very end of the appearance, I'm going to play a very rare recording that I think is going to make a lot of Beatles San Diego fans very happy. What is that? Can you well, tell I, us? I'm gonna, it's going to be a surprise, but uh, it's, it's not music, it's a speaking thing, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, how did the Beatles change music in the United States? Well, you know, they brought R&B uh, to the forefront for one thing, and soul, and Motown, and all that kind of thing, but basically, they just opened up the floodgates for everyone. Um, basically, everyone wanted to be a musician after the Beatles uh, came out on Ned Sullivan. Including yourself. Including myself, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And these are some KCBQ posters of the Beatles. Yeah, I mean, obviously they were very, very popular here in San Diego. They only did the one show, but obviously all the radio programs and TV sh stations of the day had advertisements that involved them as well. And I'll be showing a lot of those tonight. One of the fun things I'm going to show is a, a Hard Day's Night poster for the Pacific Drive-In in Pacific Beach, which is long gone, of course. So things like that uh, I'll be showing today, memorabilia like that. What else do you do, Bart? You seem like a busy guy. Oh, well, I'm a journalist by trade, so I write for everybody from the San Diego Reader to uh, the La Jolla today. I'm a musician, um, so I tour the world and write songs for various groups. I, uh, I write for all kinds of organizations, like uh, today I'm finishing up the OB Street Fair program, and I'll be working on uh, San Diego Music thing coming up, and all kinds of stuff. If it has to do with music in San Diego, I'm involved or I'd like to be. And Tony Sheridan. There's Tony an interesting Sheridan. story okay. there. Well, Tony Sheridan is the guy that kind of indirectly gave the Beatles their start with uh, My Bonnie. It was his session that the Beatles released their first songs from Ain't She Sweet, etc. And he ended up in San Diego for quite a while and made a lot of friends. His last recording was actually done in La Mesa here with Dave Humphreys. I see we're showing something on screen right now. And uh, that's, it's a really touching thing. He just passed away last year, and uh, he's going to be sorely missed. Big, big uh, part of San Diego's music scene. So when you heard that this year's fair was themed, the Fab Fair, and there was a strong 
some Beatles tie. Were you uh, were you sort of giddy? Uh, uh, I, I thought I was. It? I thought I was dreaming. I thought how can they how can they possibly do this? But it's been a fantastic experience. Even the gate where you walk in, which is the Yellow Submarine, it's just amazing what they've been able to do this year. It's wonder. I mean, I've been to the fair since I think the first time in '68 dating myself a little bit, and uh, this is definitely the best one ever. The photo exhibition I've seen inside is really cool. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And in the photo exhibition, I'd like everybody to check out one thing, too. There's pictures of John Lennon's bed in, and a very prominent San Diegan was actually there holding up the lyric sheet for John to You're read. Kidding. Paul Williams, who also passed away about two years ago, uh, Cindy Lee Berryhill's husband, and so he was a big part of that, and San Diego connection there. So much history at the fair this year. People uh, can have a chance to hear you speak more than one time. You're doing this a few times. Actually, I'm just speaking today, but I'll be performing a whole bunch of ah. other times there, and of course, I'm always happy to talk about the Beatles or San Diego music to anybody anytime. <laughs> so after your performances, if they have a question or they just want to hear a story, they can pull you aside and say, hey, Bart, tell me about this. Uh, please do. I'd love it. All right. Bart, thank you so much. Thank you for having this me. This is fun to have you on the day. And thank again, you. if you want more information on when Bart exactly will be at the fair, including his speak today and all of his live performances, go to our website, sandiego6.com.